in. And we're live. Um, we need like a, a bit of a like a jingle, don't we? We do need we a do. jingle. Have you got your... Should we um, get onto the music department? I reckon yeah. we could get a jingle going. Four peas in the pod. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably not that. <laughs> I like the other line, but maybe, maybe not <laughs> yeah. just that. Oh. Everyone's very chipper from Monday morning. I was going to say, actually, we're going to cut, all, we're gonna cut all the normal First waffle Monday that we have out as well. We're going to cut the normal waffle that we have out because this is about focusing. This is about keeping our attention on the task in hand. And the task in hand today is revision. Woo! Oh, sorry. Oh, oh, that's on silent. Okay. Right. So, as it's coming up to everyone's exams... Mm-hmm. Um, Mr. Robinson came up with a great idea of doing a revision special of things that people might want to implement into their revision um, regime or their studying, um, as a whole school going for exams at the moment, all the year 10s have just been through it. Um, so we start with some memory facts that I looked up yesterday. This is interesting. The average human attention span in 2015 was 8.25 seconds. The average attention span in 2000 was 12 seconds, which means there's been over a 30% decrease in the last 15 years. The attention span that it can go up to per by per, per year. 12 year olds are generally from 24 minutes to 36 minutes. 14 year olds are 28 minutes to 42 minutes. And 16 year olds are 32 minutes to 48 minutes. So what does where, that where tell you, you guys? Where's the Wikipedia? Yeah. It well, actually wasn't Wikipedia. I need to, so I've, <laughs> I've done some actual papers down the line, but this was just an article. Attention. Social media has made us very, very knowledge rich at the moment. We've got our knowledge at our fingertips more than any other time in human history. And so people are designed to want to go out and get that knowledge. And so the more knowledge there is, you, you've got to, people don't organise what, what it is they're trying to take on board. So you go on TikTok. For something or um, or Instagram, something like you scroll through, and I'd imagine a lot of these timings would reflect how people look at these things. Eight point two five seconds. It says that you know you probably don't spend much longer than that on a TikTok video. That's yeah. why the the better ones are really short. But people just want information, information, and so they just they they crave it. But what we've got to get back to is a stage where we can take that information on and utilise and use that information, which is, I think, one thing that we're going to start struggling to do. More like, well, you said there, people scrolling through TikTok and, and Instagram. Yeah, it's the problem. They're not actually out looking for the information. They're just scrolling. And they're not sitting, oh, I need, to, I need to know the answer to this question. I'm going to go out and find it. So actually their attention and it's focused on that. Someone will just be scrolling and go, oh, that's interesting. That looks good. What's that? It could be something irrelevant to what they're trying to find, but they're focusing on that for. A I short think, of time. yeah. I, mean, I, I just think subconsciously, your your brain wants information. It wants to learn new stuff mm. all the time. But and that is that's that's an easy way to do it. And what we've got to do is focus our attention on the things that are going to benefit us, as opposed to scrolling. Is that a problem that we have? We can be revising. And people might be their their, their minds. Um, people talk about being present. They're not present because they're thinking about right. I need I need this next hit of going Absolutely, on TikTok yeah. or this next hit of Instagram or whatever it is. I think being present is a huge thing at the minute, isn't it? Yeah. Um, being present in your revision, making sure that you've allowing <coughs> allowing breaks in your revision to be able to go off and do stuff. Mm. Ideally, you know, exercise or something that's going to mm. um, really help rather than going straight onto social media. But obviously. You need to mix it up, not having constant. Well, know, comes which actually brings it, hours of brings it onto the first technique that I've got written Whoa. down here. It's called the pomo. It was um, or, or pomodoro. Yeah, that's right, pomodoro technique. It was by Francesco Chilo 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 Chirillo. Chirillo. I'm not very good with that. That's what that is. No, we'll go with that. How do you say it? <laughs> Chirillo. Chirillo. Mm. Francesco. Oh, I can't put that on. <laughs> <laughs> um, in the 1980s. Um, and he used a tomato shaped uh, kitchen timer and he came up with the sort of the, 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 the scheme of doing 25 minutes on, five minutes off, you do it four times and then you earn yourself a long break, which I think is a great way because that's, tw that, that's 20, 25 minutes, I think, is more than enough for concentration, especially. Yeah when you're doing something that might not necessarily be as interesting, if you can just go, there's 25 minutes of intense or proper proper focus, that's we, gonna make a massive We've difference. become, and a lot of our GCSE A-level students know a lot about muscle physiology and training and everything else, 
And over the last couple of years, the amount of studies that have been done on brain function and neurology have understood that the way your muscles work and the way you train is actually quite should be quite similar to the way you train your brain. So um, things like Tabata training uses a similar method to that. You you train intensely for twenty seconds. You have ten seconds off and treat your brain in exactly the same way as you would treat your muscles. I mean, times are slightly different, but similar ideas, short, sharp, little breaks. Yeah, it's um, that's something that we've been working on as a staff, isn't it? Um, about retrieval techniques yeah. and things. And one of the things that we've spoken about is it's about those connections in the brain to make it your short-term memory and getting them to be quicker. The only way you can really do that is by repetition. The more that you go over things over and over again, and it can be a bit repetitive, obviously, and <clears throat> um, perhaps a little bit boring and tedious at times, but you go over something again and again and again, maybe the full fifth, sixth time in, in a week, then there's, that's gonna be right there when you need it, that information. There was, um, this, when I first started teaching, there was a lot around um, different teaching styles and learning styles. Can you hear it? Yeah, but, but why are you getting... Yeah, so, so, we have to stop the podcast then, because yeah. Mr. Stock's attention span. Yeah. <laughs> so, would you like to give us an example of that, Mr. Stock, of your 8.2 seconds there? There was something buzzing in the background. Yeah. I, didn't wanna, I, didn't, I didn't want to disrupt so, the listeners' so, experience. Tip number one for today is to... Uh, Not listen to Mr. Ignore Stock. Distractions. <laughs> ignore distractions. Ignore distractions, i.e. buzzing bees around. Um, otherwise, it, you know... Excellent. Right, excellent. so let's move on. So... Um, our year 11 and 13 students have actually gone on to study leave. Mm -hmm. So that means they've got a lot of time to themselves. They've got a bit more autonomy over what they do. What do we think the, the, the tips for them are in terms of structuring and making sure that they, they get the most out of that time that they have to themselves? Uh, uh, it's, it's the first, it's got to get into a routine. They've got to have a plan. I think they've had five years now, especially well, especially year 11s, they've had five years now of, of, a, of a very structured routine of this is what time you need to be in school, these are the lesson times, this is the time that you you know, you know can go home and now they're going to be given you know, the free time. I think it's great what, what Mr Dean has put in in terms of they can come into school and still keep some form of structure and they can be mm. in here, but you know it is voluntary and I think there could be an opportunity if that they don't have a plan and I'm going to make sure that from this time I'm working on this subject and doing all the, the techniques that they've been given it could sort of be a bit detrimental to them. The hardest thing is making a start as well and just do something quite simple to start with that's related to the exam <clears throat> or the subject that you're trying to learn and then the next thing will follow. Just that initial sitting down start point is quite difficult. Yeah. I, I, getting into uh, a normal sleeping routine. I know Sleep. that sounds like such a simple thing but when you have especially the day to yourself. School actually can be quite draining on like the mind, but when you have the whole day to yourself to do stuff, it might come to like 10, 11 o'clock, and you're still flicking through your phone, and you've not got a normal pattern, a normal routine to go to bed. You then end up staying up till whatever, 1, 12 o'clock, and that is a detriment to the next day. So you need to go, right, well, half 10, I'm asleep each night. I know I've got, I'm gonna read my book before, I'm gonna cut out blue light half an hour before that everything's in place for me to then to go to sleep, to have the best preparation for the next day, and I've got to stick to that prep for the the, the, the six weeks that I'm, I'm, I'm through my exams. Um, I think that's a really key one. Everything I looked at was was, was sleep is so vital for it all. Um, Des, diet, exercise, sleep. Just make sure that you stay on top of all of those things. Some people think that you've got to spend all your time sitting revising, or actually, don't stop exercising because yeah. that will help brain function. Um, release of endorphins and dopamine help to build those neural connections. So, you've got to make sure you keep exercising. I mean, with with technology and everything, you know, something like the podcast, for example, there are podcasts out there by people for you know for more qualified than us. <laughs> yeah, more qualified <laughs> than us. But subject specialists in terms of you know revision techniques and exam preparation. Yeah. And we're talking about exercise, going for a walk in between yeah. some revision, listening to a podcast yeah. could be a way of, you know, topping up topping up the knowledge that you've just been working on. But as you said, keeping the exercise going, um, we get, when we get say, away from desks and stuff. And when we say exercise, 
as you said there, it doesn't have to be an intense no, period of exercise. Yeah. It just has to be a walk. Just like, just mm. go and do something to relieve boredom. Just get out and do something. Yeah. Get in the fresh air. It 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 Excellent. really does help. The diet is extremely important as well because you're you're using quite a lot of calories simply through studying and revising. So make sure that you're not eating lots of sugar because you'll burn off all those calories very quickly and then you'll slump and you'll struggle to concentrate. And caffeine. <laughs> yeah, caffeine. <laughs> caffeine. It's the same. Yeah, it's it keeps us caffeine. going. But yeah, try and reduce the amount of caffeine that you're taking. Um, increase the complex carbohydrates. Lots of fatty acids in there to help with brain function. I wrote down two more tips before we, we, we move on to, to the best ways we think to revise. Um, ones that work for, for me, because I, I read to about exercise a little while ago and it was find the time that you enjoy it and you can exercise the most. So for example, you exercise every morning, Mr. Robinson. Mm -hmm. I couldn't do that, I don't like that. You exercise every morning, so I'll give you credit as well, Mr. Pelt, if you've oh, done that for you. last week. Cheers, um, Mr. Robinson's done it for the last 20 years. <laughs> um, but I couldn't do that, but I find exercising after work is is, uh, is much better for me because I go home happy, I finish the night off, and I'm, I use that last bit of energy I've got. But I'd say that's exactly the same with, the, with, with revision. Find the time that you can revise the the, the, the most effectively and find where your zone is and where your your peak is going to be and the other one that was something that I found at university is I'd be sometimes I'd be very unmotivated to to revise and unmotivated to do things and there's other times where I'd go I'm just in the zone here I'm just going to keep going and keep rattling things off because I just felt like it, it's all going in it's all it's all I'm all getting there I'm just and, and sometimes you'd go for or contrary to the thing I'd go for 90 minutes because it'd just be like I'm in the zone here I've got the 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 groove of it and then other times there'll be times where nothing's going in yeah and then you just gotta go leave it for mm. now go off do something else go read a book go for a walk go for a run yeah uh, come back go for a nap if you need to and then come back and then you never know that might be yeah. it's no I think the textbook be. definition yeah. of metacognition isn't it mm. understanding your brain and what you what, what how that's working and when you come back to it as well I, Obviously, find something that you're actually you're good at and you know that's already on there, but that you can practice. Just simple yeah. stuff to start with, and then that kick starts everything else. So going over things that you already know is fine. Let's move on to how how we revise. Possibly the most important bit. Um, any tips? Be very quizzing. yeah quizzing. Go on. I like quizzing. It's person personal, and obviously everyone's going to have their different. Um, what they like and what they don't like. Um, I really like the idea of working with someone. Mm. So yeah. if you're in 317 or if you're at home or wherever you are, if you can do it with other people. Um, and what I created for my year 11s was like a glossary of all the key terms of the course mm. uh, with all definitions and examples. And they use that to create their own questions. Yep. And then that's just a way of getting reps in because by creating a question, you're going over the topic. And then by asking the question, you go over the topic. And then by the your partner answering mm. the question, you go over it again. Yeah. And then you give the answer and you go over it again. And you've done four reps by by doing one thing. So that's just repetition. The definition, the dictionary definition of rep is, revision is going over something again. Yeah. So the more I'll, reps you can get in. I walked into my form room the other day and they had the red cups on each end of the table in a triangle, yeah. very similar to a game that we might know. What are you doing? Like we're playing revision pong, and so they you've got to get the ball in the cup, obviously, and to remove the cup, you have to answer a question. The question was class. As you really good. Yeah, class. So yeah, make it fun as well. Like, yeah. Work with Some, people, make it fun. One way that I, I <coughs> that back in a long time ago when I was doing some revision, um, <laughs> one of my teachers came up with a really good way was to write down everything that you know is the correct answer so pick a subject write down everything in terms of a, everything on the it, subject everything that you know it's a good start point a good yeah. start point and then go and find a peer go and find someone in the same class who's done the same thing and yeah, cross reference it, what yeah. you know and if there is then something that's on your piece of paper that or your sheet that's not on theirs or vice versa you teach that bit to that other person <laughs> so that you can that's you know that and then you then take those two teacher or a member of staff who's that subject and goes is there anything on these two pieces of paper yeah. that you feel I should be having on there because you know there might be something that you've both missed and then that way then you you get your the member of staff or the teacher to reteach those bits because you've got the base knowledge you've able to teach that and give that over to somebody else you're able to then receive it from somebody else and then go and find a, 
a specialist. And I think with with three one seven with the independent learning stuff that can happen up there, that could be a really good way, you know, of of working together and, and using the time as effectively as possible. One one thing that sometimes infuriates me as well is that people spend two years of a course or three years of a course and um, take loads of notes and do everything else, and then they'll put that book away and then they'll go on the internet and revise off the internet. Mm. Like we talk about when you go in the gym, having good form when you do your reps, you've got to make sure you have good form when you're revising, you've got to have good information. And obviously the reason you've spent two years taking notes is because that's the stuff that's going to be in the exam. Your teachers have got the knowledge to, to know and understand what's the sorts of things that will come up. So that's, that's what they base their lessons on. So use your um, notes from your books. And, and then if you are going on the internet and you are using textbooks and everything else, make sure you're using the correct textbooks. I'm I'm massive on cue cards for my boys. So <coughs> so 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 that should contain a slightly more condensed version of all the notes they've made throughout the year, but that should act as a revision tool and I, I go over how to question on it and it's just like right, we'll ask question a load of questions on cue card one, pick five cue cards, quest cue card one, go to two, back to one, you go to two, then to three, then you go back to one, to two, then you might go to four, then you go back and it's just the constant yeah. recall and bouncing around that by the, by the end of it, by the time you get to five and you bounce back to two and three and, and you, you when you ask that same question off of one, they go, well, it's obviously that one. And because it's obviously that one, it's starting to get ingrained into into long-term memory. And it also helps if you get sort of a significant other to do it because in the exam, sometimes you can remember their voices and you remember, because people say that when you associate sounds to something, yeah. that then helps helps you to remember it. So if it, it might be a parent, it might be a sibling, might be mate, might be a mate. Um, and you associate that to, to, to what they're doing. Um, and, and the other one I've, I spoke to my boys about was that they all do these practice questions, practice, practice exams, but they do a whole exam paper. And by the time they've done a whole exam paper, that's 50 minutes, their brain's fried, and then they mark it, and it has no value. Do three questions, mark it, go through what was, and you can do that all in a 45 minute block, and that will you will sink in a far lot more than you will if you go into if you rather than doing 90 minutes of a paper and then marking it just do a small amount of questions mark it understand where you're at in terms of that teaching someone else as well i always find that's that's a good one Bring me on to my ah. next my next theory or, because or you yeah. by, by teaching someone else you're thinking about that subject or that area even more deeply because you're trying to think about things that are you know, questions that could come back and everything else. So teach someone else. Stanis, do you want to read the name of it? <laughs> do you want to read the name of it? The protege effect. The protege effect. I'm glad you brought that up, Stanis. By by John what? Paul Martin. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> John. <laughs> Lewis. Yeah, um, yeah, you're going uh, through, in, going in through the accent. <laughs> and he said that the the, right, the protege effect is essentially teaching. Um, but there's some psychological principles that, that, that underpin this, that as teachers we understand and we know because we go through it on a daily basis. Um, first one is um, expecting to teach and teaching can lead to increase in metacognition processes and makes people more aware of what they're teaching. So for example, I know when I'm teaching what I'm strong on and I know that that reflects in the children. So I know that things that I might not necessarily be as strong on I know that I've got to really go over with them in order for them to, to understand that. And that, that gives a, a level of understanding if, if you're teaching a parent, a sibling, a mate, whatever. Um, expecting to teach and teach can lead to an increase in the use of effective learning strategies, such as organising, organisation of material and seeking out key pieces of information. Um, expecting to teach and teaching can lead to an increase in motivation to learn, because people will often make a greater effort to learn for those that they will teach something that we can all relate to I hope. Um, expecting to teach and teaching can lead to an increase in feeling of competence and autonomy by encouraging people to view themselves as playing the role as a teacher rather than the student. So that, that's sort of the, the underpinning philosophy to that. So I, I, I say to my boys just go and if, if your pet if your parents or your 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 sibling can understand especially some of the boys that have got um got uh, siblings that are coming up to do GCPE you can teach them parts yeah. of the syllabus that you might not necessarily be as strong at then you've clearly got a very, very clear understanding. And then when you go to say some things and you go, actually, well, that might be a bit hazy, come back to it. I think that, that's, that's a really powerful, powerful tool. We've got, we've got some do nots and some exam day tips. Anyone want to go? I'll go. Anyone, yeah, anyone go for some do nots? I think, I think with the do nots, you know, 
obvious one is don't have your mobile phone on yeah. near you. Don't have music in the background. You know, don't have the TV playing or try and try and take yourself away from distractions that we know. Yeah. You know, you know, and yourself will will affect you. Um, obviously, if you have if you have a laptop or you, or you need a laptop, just have that one screen open. Don't have tabs at the top and go. I'm just going to check the football rugby scores, or I'm just going to go online and, and and scroll a bit of you know Facebook or whatever. Just have your one tab open that you need, and you know, bring yourself away from any distractions as possible for that small period of time. Yeah. Um, Most common one I'd say is don't sit and read information. Unless you are one of these very rare people who have a photographic memory, do not sit and just 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 sit and read because a it's monotonous and because it's monotonous it's not going to go in, and it's 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 not an effective way of doing things. You're not recalling any for information. It's not going to sink into your brain um, through that. So that's 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 a huge one. Don't revise on an empty stomach. Make sure that you're fueled up, just as if you would if you're going out to play a game of rugby or basketball. Make sure you're fueled. Nice. Yeah, pretty simple ones, really. Exam dates. Take breaks, exercise. Oh, yeah. Take, Take breaks, it. exercise. Exercise, play sport. Yeah. For, for those times. Be happy. Enjoy the experience. Yeah. One thing we didn't cover in, in uh, probably doesn't, co- well, it could come under the exam day tips. Actually. Go on, go for Something it. that I, f- I find myself quite effective. We said about r- lots of information. Um, but I, I spoke to my form about this. I was like, what's, what's one of the things you do every single day? And, Everyone was like, oh, brush teeth or, you know, go to the bathroom. I was like, in those areas where you're going to go regularly, just around the house, mm. just put a sticky note. Yeah, a sticky yeah, note yeah. Of, of a small piece of information that you are struggling to comprehend and understand. And just put it there so that every day, you don't have to worry about it, you've just got to read it. Whilst you're brushing your teeth, it could be it could be a maths equation, it could be a science equation, it could be something to do with, with you know, PE. But just have it there. Have it there so that when you go there and you're brushing your teeth, you're going to, retrieve that information and once that piece of information is then in, in there and you can see it and you understand it but another piece but you know? when you're when you're sat in the exam struggling to remember something your brain will mm-hmm. go to the bathroom yeah. on the mirror yep. where it was and then you're more likely to remember absolutely because mm-hmm. your brain works in pictures yeah what we're not saying is get a thousand sticky yes. notes don't ruin your bathroom your house, house, or the ceiling house, on the side just the small small piece of information that please do that yeah yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. send your pictures yeah, yeah. yes House send your, send your pictures in, send your pictures into the pod yeah send and it you can, you can you can send it to we'll myself or Mr Patworth yeah and that could be it but no and just tell your parents we didn't tell you to do that yeah um but I think, yeah, for, especially when you've got exams coming up, you know, if you've got, but biology's tomorrow for year 11. Um, so mm. there is P. a on Wednesday. P on Wednesday. Wednesday. So the information that you know for the next couple of days you're going to need is, is yeah. just get it, up around your, get it up around your bedroom, around your house, places that you're going to go and visit regularly, just so it just drip feeds yeah. in. Yeah. One, one thing, I don't know why or where, when I was doing my GCs, I saw five tips for exam day revision and one of them was eat a banana I don't know why I don't ask me the source but every day then since I've had an exam I've eaten a banana well, on the mix and look at you now and, and look at me now, now. I'm a teacher, <laughs> teacher so obviously it works yeah, yeah perfect um, I've stopped having the banana so maybe water throughout problem. the day I think that's just a normal thing isn't it not just to yeah. do with exams you should be doing that eat good breakfast get yeah. good sleep yeah. I think the one thing as well is and it's difficult but it's don't stress Yeah, it's really easy for people to say that as well and don't stress about it and, and but don't go to bed worrying about something. Don't go to bed sitting there thinking, oh, do I know this? Do I know that? It's, it is just that. You've you got can't to. affect it when yeah. you're no. lying in your bed. If yeah. you've done the prem, mm-hmm. then your, your, your understanding should be that when it's finished, you can't do anything. You, you've done everything you I can to that point, so you couldn't do anything the, else. There will be levels of anxiety, yeah. and that's yeah, okay. That's, that's fine, because that just shows you care. Like if, you, if you weren't nervous about it, you wouldn't care. So that, that's absolutely normal, but don't lose sleep over it. Yeah. No. Good stuff, Good luck, guys. Yeah. Well, I hope this helped. Um, if any of it did really help, then please, we can we could start getting some subscribers, Whoa, and viewers to, yeah. to email Subscribe. back in and let us know how this has helped or, or give us some questions. Uh, sadly, we don't have a specific pod email, so it will just have to be stockb at gravesendgrammar.com. So if you want to email us in any questions or any, any anything that's has helped oh, with, then, then email, or, email or, us or in. Future or, or future future yeah. things that you might you might want to want to hear uh, see or hear see or hear yeah I suppose see. yeah why not well but there is it's YouTube but we're waffling now um, <laughs> so how was your weekend <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 right. right good stuff um, all the best we will be back uh, with our next guest who is still to be revealed or decided um, 
next week. So until then, good luck with all your exams. Yeah, good luck.